Hope everybody's doing well out there. And all right, it's uh, officially 1010 I have on my clock, so uh, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Gregory Green. I am a solution engineer with the VMware's uh, data services uh, team. And it is a pleasure to be with you today at ApacheCom. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Apache Geo. Apache Geo is a NoSQL in-memory data management platform. At VMware, we have a commercially supported version of Geo, which we call a Gemfire. And specifically today, I wanted to talk about the unique challenges of online transactional uh, processing when you're building your applications or your data services. Okay, you can't hear me? Um, we can't hear you. Okay. Um, Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, me too. I can hear you. Okay. All right. Let me try one more time. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm here to talk about the unique challenges of online transactional processing. Uh, so I hope some of you out there, maybe you are building account-based solutions, think about customer data, or retail, um, merchandise, point of sale, uh, like solutions, or in the financial industry, uh, or um, uh, ATM transactions. Uh, OLTP is extremely important, and there is a great article on the oracle.com uh, website that outlines the principles of, of OLTP, like asset compliance, concurrency, uh, scale, so on and so forth. So my goal today is to try to demonstrate how Apache Geo satisfies each one of these uh, requirements. So the first principle uh, for OLTP that we wanted to dive into is reliability, which really basically just talks about being able to perform data access operations over a relatively small amount of data reliably. Uh, at its core, a geode has a data structure which is called a region. You could think of as a region as uh, equivalent to a table in a, a traditional relational database, but the data structure is a key value pair. So you can get out your objects, whether it's simple objects or uh, complex, where you have objects inside of objects, uh, they could be just primitives like strings or binaries. You can get it out really quickly by specifying a key or some unique identifier. But also you can perform queries on your structured data, right? You can query on any, any field using where conditions and this syntax for queries within Geo is very similar to a SQL, it's called the object query language. You can also do full text search. Uh, because Geo uses an in-memory uh, version of, or utilizes Apache Lucene to do in-memory full text-based searches. If you need to uh, respond to data based on events or changes to your data based on events, you can do that by implementing listeners. Your listeners can be uh, notified either client-side or server-side. And it, there's another feature, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, what you could do is you can register a query with Geo and whenever a, a the data set matches a particular uh, predicate, like a where condition, uh, your code will be notified of those uh, create, uh, update, or delete operations. Uh, Geo also supports transactions. We're going to dive into it a little bit more in a bit. But also, uh, there is a data policy for managing your regions. You have replicated regions where on every server that manages the data, there's an exact copy of the data. And it's also partitioned regions where the data is more evenly distributed amongst uh, the, the server. So you can handle those larger uh, volumes and data sets. Uh, Geo supports uh, asset compliance. And asset compliance is basically just being able to update multiple data sets, in this case, multiple regions, with a single root unit of work and being able to commit or roll back them together. 
you can use the lower level uh, APIs to start a transaction uh, and uh, commit or roll back those transactions in your code. But if you're writing applications on a Java virtual machine, think about like Kotlin languages or J just native uh, Java, you can utilize a, an abstraction layer on Spring. So Spring supports a project called uh, Spring Data Geo that makes the job of incorporating uh, uh, a geo connectivity in your applications really easy. And uh, in, in order to implement transactions, it's just as simple as putting an annotation on your methods. Security is another big one when you talk about online transactional processing for your various use cases. And Geo has a, uh, a plugin model, which is basically called a security manager. So that is where you can implement your authentication and your authorization. There's several open source implementations of a security manager. I'm going to show you one that I've written running on my local machine. Uh, but also uh, another thing that you could do, suppose you have use cases where certain users are not able to see certain fields within your data sets. So think about like personal identifiable information or sensitive information like a social security number, right? Based on the user, you can implement a post-processor uh, code that would mask or filter or, or uh, remove those sensitive records for users that are not privileged to access that information. And of course, you can use uh, encryption on flight using TLS-based uh, communication. All right, so let's dive into a demo where we're going to highlight each one of these principles. What I have is I have two uh, Java-based, uh, JVM-based applications. We have the account REST service, which is going to provide uh, CRUD operations on the account region. And then we have an account location, a Kotlin-based app, which is basically going to test, I'm going to demonstrate uh, transactions with that. So what it's going to do, it's going to update the account and the location um, region with a single transaction. And it has a validation in the code such that if you enter in an invalid uh, zip code, it's going to throw an exception. The expected behavior is if the exception is thrown, the changes that were saved into the account re region or repository, in this case, would be rolled back with that single unit of work. I'm going to open up my uh, shell. And I also have uh, some of the examples already copied out on, um, uh, on a uh, markdown. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up what we call GFish. Uh, GFish is a command line interface into uh, Apache uh, Geo. And, uh, and uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to connect. So I'm connecting basically to a, uh, to a instance running on my machine. I'm entering in the admin user. This admin has privileges to do all operations. It's sort of like a super user. So he has uh, access to create the regions. Oh, I, uh, I actually probably should have already deleted my regions before the demo, but those regions are already created. So typically you have access to delete, uh, to create those regions, to delete those regions. And now what we're going to do is we have those regions started. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start up the applications. So I'm going to start up my uh, Kotlin-based application. This is the one that's going to uh, manage a transaction on the, uh, the account in the location object. And then we have the uh, account rest uh, service. Remember, this is the one that's going to provide CRUD op operations just on the account uh, region. So now I have those applications up and running. Um, I'm going to minimize these a little bit so I can uh, show you. Uh, we're going to basically post uh, some data to the Kotlin-based application. So what this is doing is going to update the account record and the location record. And since and everything is saved, everything is valid, so we're going to validate that everything just works. All right, so we posted that data. Now what we can do is we can utilize 
the uh, count rest service and we read out that data. So we did a, pro a basic uh, write uh, read operation. The next example will try to update both the, uh, the account uh, and the location, but in this case, the location has an invalid zip code. So the changes to the account record that were saved in the transaction should be rolled back when, uh, when we throw this exception. So this will cause a uh, internal server error. All right, so we've got our internal server error. Now the expected result that we get, it shouldn't have the value of invalid zip code rolled back. All right, so it has the correct uh, value. Right, it has the rollback value of the account. All right, so that's how our transaction work within um, Geo. Uh, let's show you now also uh, security. So I'm going to go back into uh, GFish, and now what? We'll let's do. Let's just disconnect or log out as the uh, as the account user. Uh, as the admin user, I should say, and log in as the account user. Now, this account user has access to do uh, read operations on the account region. So you can do a select. Uh, you can do a put, so you can insert a new record into the region. Uh, you can do a remove. So basically, all of the CRUD operations you can do on that account region. But with this particular user, I'm not, I don't have access to the location region. So in this case, I get, I, I'm not authorized access. So that's a, a not a access, I don't have access to do a read. And of course I can't do uh, any writes because I don't have the privileges. I also, with this account region, uh, if I was to try to shut down the entire uh, cluster of, uh, G, uh, of Gemfire or the running instance of Geo, I also don't have access to do any cluster, cluster level permissions, right? So you can narrow down your, you can create your service accounts and give them just the, uh, the privileges that you want them to do. So to separate uh, concerns. All right, so that's security within um, Apache Geo. Let's go back to the presentation. All right, scale. So when we talk about scale, um, it happens many times when you do your capacity planning, you push your solution to production, and then you have a good problem in that you get more uh, um, traffic than you expected. And many times is you have to address a scaling after you actually gone to production. Well, a geo makes this very easy from a data services side because you have these core components. You have a cache server data node. That's where the, the data is actually held. And you have the locators which acts as a controller or a coordinator for uh, both the cache servers and clients. The notion of connected locators and data nodes is called the cluster. You can add as many data nodes as you want to handle more or more data, uh, the data sets and also increased uh, clients. And you can also add additional locators to act as backups uh, so you can uh, maintain um, you know, your availability for various uh, clients. So whether you're a Java client, Node.js, uh, C++, not .NET Framework, uh, you can utilize, there's a, a REST API, a generic REST API for all of the rate or regions. Uh, so you can access it through the HTTP interface. And then for your existing uh, Redis application, Geode has an experimental uh, REST, uh, uh, Redis adapter, I should say. So your uh, Redis applications can just talk to Apache Geode cluster and it's transparent whether it's Geode or Redis today. Availability. So this, especially when you talk about, you know, those uh, ATM transactions, those financial based um, uh, applications, you know, availability is critical. And at VMware, we provide a, 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 a Kubernetes operator for uh, Apache Geo 
um, that makes it easy to provision and maintain high availability fault tolerance for your Apache Geo deployments. Essentially, you're declaring the state of your uh, clusters. You could be fairly large clusters by just uh, having a YAML definition. So let's show you a demo of that, of scale and availability. All right. So what I have here is, and also let me uh, bring up my, uh, my uh, notes. All right. So in here, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start the creation of a cluster. So if I look at the, this is basically the definition of this file. So in this, I'm using the, our uh, Gemfire cluster operator, which is provisioning the cluster. I'm specifying the number of records for the locator and the number of records for the cache server of data nodes. And any lower level JVM properties that I wanna provide, like uh, for garbage uh, tuning, for example, I can provide via the, op the operator. All right, so uh, I can look at, if you're familiar with uh, Kubernetes, uh, I can look at the, uh, the definitions of uh, the cluster as they're created. So basically the locators are being uh, created. So, and that's, this is the general process. And so all of the best practices for running um, a, a, a geo cluster are included within this operator, right? So for example, if you had multiple locators, you would start, you would start them up in, in, in parallel. You will wait for the state of those locators to be ready. So they're doing things like initializing the data stores, uh, saving some metadata information. And once they are up and running, then you would start your cache servers, right? Uh, so this is what it's doing. You can start up your cache servers in parallel um, and the Kubernetes operator working with the, uh, the uh, um, Gemfire Kubernetes operator is again, just uh, waiting for the statuses of those clusters to be up and available. All right, so we at least have one cache server running and we're still waiting for the other cache server uh, to start running. Um, the next step of this is to basically create a, we will basically do the same operations that I did locally. Now this cluster is actually running and um, and uh, Google's and uh, uh, the GKE, basically Google's Kubernetes engine. So now uh, that everything's up and running, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create the same regions. We'll create the account region. Uh, we'll deploy the uh, the account uh, the account. Sorry, yeah, the account rest servers. So I used, uh, this is prior, prior to the uh, demonstration today, I basically have my um, a Docker image of my account rest service. Uh, and I basically provide the uh, YAML definition and configure it to uh, connect to the Apache Geo cluster. And now it's up and running. And all of the examples are on, I'll give you the link uh, to where all of the source code is on my GitHub page. All right, so now we got the, um, the uh, pod up and running, the account rest service up and running. Now, what we'll do is we'll expose so we can talk to the account rest service over uh, port uh, 8080. And we'll do a, a write operation. So let's do a write operation here, make this a little bit bigger. So we did a write. Now, uh, and we can do a get operation. So we basically wrote the information and, and wrote it out. So, and it got it out. So we went from creating a cluster and deploying an application and being able to be up and running and doing uh, rewrite operations fairly quickly. Uh, we can do some chaos testing, right? So what, the, what we're doing here is we're basically going to delete 
uh, or uh, simulate a server being crashed. And you see that the, 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 the server status ter changed to terminate it, and now it's already being created by Kubernetes and using the Gemfire operator uh, to, to implement the best practices of what you should do uh, when a server uh, crashes, right? So, um, so basically now it's already up and running. So it's already recreated. And um, we can test to see if we experience any data loss. Nope, we didn't experience any data loss. Let's scale up our number of locators. Uh, let's, let's put this up here. We're gonna scale up our number of locators basically from one locator to two locators. So it's just as easy as that. Basically, I have another uh, YAML definition that changes, um, if I go back up here, just basically change this value from one to two. Very simple. All right, and it's running, but it's not ready. It's now in a, in a ready state. All right, now let's do some more chaos testing. So what I'm going to do is basically, I'm I'm in a for loop. We are just doing a get operation on the account record. So we're just doing it over and over again. So what we're going to do is, uh, while that is running, we're going to be deleting uh, instances. So we're going to delete a uh, locator. We see now it's terminated. It's not available. Uh, but I don't have any uh, errors in my for loop. Um, which is, I think, you know, again, this is very powerful and that even if I try to start, if I start up new apps and have a new burst of, uh, of, of workloads, at least now uh, this is being restarted, but also there's already a backup running that can take, that can take control and service uh, any accounts uh, since this guy is is um, being restarted or being auto healed, but again, my client application has not been affected at all. I can also do things like I can scale up um, the uh, the data nodes, right? So that essentially now I'm scaling uh, from two uh, two cache server data nodes to two three. So you get the idea. Um, so now my locator is up and running. I have two locators now. My third cache server is uh, being created. It's, it's already up and running. I can do the same thing where I can delete, um, I can simulate the crash, uh, an outage of another, uh, of the second uh, cache server. And again, it just auto heals. So I hope that you see uh, from this exercise that, you know, especially when you're deploying Geo on Kubernetes, it's a great way to have that uh, not only scalability, but the high availability built into the solution. All right, let's continue in our talk. Recoverability. Uh, so uh, we, showed, we showed you some aspects of being able to recover from outages, right? within a, a particular uh, cluster deployment, but sometimes you need cross data center uh, replication, right? Whether that's active passive or active active for your disaster recovery so you can survive outages for loss of an entire data center, right? And, uh, and Geo supports that, right? With its WAN replication capabilities. So let's demonstrate that. All right, so uh, go back to my shell. We'll clean up some things. Uh, we'll clear this out. Uh, so now what we're going to do is go to the, uh, the next uh, exercise. Uh, this is uh, basically going to create another cluster. And the cluster is basically going to be, it's, got, it's just it basically has an, another name. Um, it's going to be the same size. It's going to be two uh, locators and three uh, cache server data nodes. Um, I'm running this all on the same namespace or the same uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, nodes. 
Uh, typically, you would, you would have uh, different nodes and different data centers, but this is just for demo uh, purposes. So uh, now my locators, you'll see uh, these two, they're, they're, being start, they're being started. Uh, at least one is running. Okay, now they're both running. And now it's starting up the, uh, the data nodes. So now what we're going to do once those uh, the second cluster servers uh, start up, what we're going to do is going to create a what we call a gateway receiver in cluster number one. So this is going to allow it to receive uh, updates uh, from this new cluster. And then we create a sender in the new cluster to send updates from cluster two to cluster one. All right, so it looks like the servers is up and running. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna create the receiver. All right, so this receiver is created uh, in uh, cluster one. We're going to create uh, the sender in cluster two. And uh, now we're going to create the region in cluster number two. And I'm going to, we're gonna use the sender to say that any updates uh, in this cluster is sent to cluster one. The same, so we did that for the account region. We'll also do that for the location region. Okay, great. Uh, so now what we have going to do is I'm going to deploy uh, the same uh, Kotlin based uh, app, but now this app is going to be uh, talking to cluster number uh, two. So this guy is now being created. And again, it's going to uh, expose uh, saving the account in location information in cluster number two. So it looks like it's now running. So we can see that it's it's running now. Uh, and also we're going to deploy the account REST uh, server. And again, that's also going to be pointing to cluster number two. Uh, I'm going to expose, uh, basically I'm going to provide a way to uh, talk uh, to the Kotlin uh, application running in cluster two. So I'll do a port forward. And now if I go back here, oh, let's go back here. All right, so now what we'll do is, uh, basically this is, this is 8080 is the uh, application pointing to cluster number uh, one. So I'm trying to get out a record by this field. The, the, the key is called account-wan. There's no data, right? It's, it's null. So now I'm going to post to the Kotlin applications that's gonna write to cluster number two. And uh, this is the record that it's writing to cluster number two. But now when I read from cluster number one, oh, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so now it got that right uh, from, so the, this record came from cluster two to cluster one. So that was random application. All right, great. Uh, I think we're doing great on time. Um, just got a couple more things before we wrap this up. Um, and talking about high throughput and low latency, um, again, uh, I don't have to say how important this is, uh, but uh, GEO, because of its in-memory nature for uh, data, it's highly optimized for rewrite operations uh, than traditional disk-based uh, uh, databases or data solutions. Also, it held, handles concurrency very well. Uh, remember I talked about the data policies, whether it's uh, partitioned or replicated? Well, for partitioned uh, data policies, consistency is maintained based on the keys. So if you have multiple instances trying to update the same key, it, there's a lock based on the key. 
If you're using replicated regions, it's a more sophisticated uh, mechanism to resolve conflicts. So even if uh, updates are uh, received uh, out of order in, uh, for some reason, uh, Gemfire internally will figure out what's the latest uh, record in order to apply those changes and dis disregard um, out of order changes. Um, but you can also implement locking if, if you choose. Uh, you, so there's a distributed lock, uh, distributed act, I should say, and a global um, uh, locking mechanisms. All right, so let's do a one final demo. Uh, this demo is I already have a, um, a, a cluster in another um, uh, namespace running in GKE uh, where it has uh, several uh, cache servers and we have a performance test app, a Kotlin-based app that I wrote that's going to try to put some load on this cluster. All right, so let me go to my trusty notes for this. So essentially what I'm doing is the, the namespace that we're using is this perp test. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, out some stuff. So I'm creating a, just another region. Uh, it's the region name in this case is uh, the test, a test region. Um, I'm going to expose, uh, there is a, a monitoring uh, app in Apache Geo, uh, which is called Pulse. So I'm going to expose that port, uh, that port so we can access uh, the cluster using Pulse. So I can log in using a username and password. All right, and uh, this is basically my cluster. I have one locator and I have several uh, CAF servers. You see that these are the statistics that we're really going to look at, our uh, rewrite per second. Um, so we have no uh, traffic here. We have no clients uh, here across these uh, six uh, uh, servers. So let's go ahead and put some traffic. So, uh, all right, so we created that, we did the port forwarding, we're in the right directory. So now what I'm gonna do is I have a set of uh, YAML files uh, that uh, will deploy that perp test uh, app. And it's gonna create multiple instances uh, of them. Uh, once they start up, let's go ahead and let's see if we can look at the logs. So let me clear this out. And we're going to look at the logs for some of those apps. All right. So, all right. So it's 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 starting up. Uh, it's initializing. It's bootstrapping. It's getting connected to uh, to Geo. You see, it's all. I think it's already started. Should we show? If we go back to Pulse, let's see if we start seeing some connections. Okay. We see fourteen uh, clients. Uh, sorry, fifteen clients. Um, we're starting to see if I, I can check, I can click on data and you can see the number of records that's being populated. Um, and then you can also mouse over the line so you can see how many uh, records per uh, second are being written. So, oh, we got over four, we got over 400,000 uh, uh, records per second with this throughput test, which is pretty good. Um, I also, I also have something that, um, will allow us to get the latency. So this operation, this, this little code, uh, will just do some, uh, get operations and it'll show you the latency for the, uh, for the gets. So it's initializing, bootstrapping. Um, okay, so now it has a connection. And if we go back to Pulse, we should start seeing the, uh, the reads per second are picking up. Yep, so that's this new app. The other app is pretty, pretty much just focusing on, um, on the uh, right. So this is the one that's doing the reads. And you see it, it printed out some stats. Uh, let me make these a little bit bigger. 
All right. So very good. Excellent timing. So we were less than, we were in the nanosecond range for the averages. Uh, the max was five, five milliseconds. 99, 90th percentile was less than uh, a millisecond. And if I bet we run it a, a couple more times, we can get better top. But uh, that shows you uh, the low latency. The, these times are, are, are pretty good. All right, uh, so that's pretty much concurrency, high throughput, and um, uh, low latency. So I hope that you were able to uh, see that. Uh, I hope I, uh, I met my goal to prove that Apache Geo uh, meets all of the uh, requirements of OLTP. Uh, again, all of the examples that are shown today are on my GitHub uh, page. Uh, you can follow me at uh, my Twitter handle or uh, on my uh, GitHub. Um, so I guess I'll pause right now and see if there's uh, any uh, questions. Because I believe I still have about five minutes uh, for questions. All right, so if you have your questions, please uh, put it into the chat. Uh, was this useful for everyone? Just hit me, give me a yes. <laughs> Any questions? No questions, okay, great. Thank you, Javier. Any question for anybody else? Yes, uh, Node.js uh, client. Yes, uh, that is supported. Um, okay, just checking to see if there's any questions. It was useful to understand. Apache Geo, thank you. The old, no client uh, open source. Uh, yes, I believe the the no client is not open source. Um, I can confirm that with the team. Um, it's uh, available from VMware. So if you ping me, I, I can get you more information uh, on the uh, uh, the no client. Any other questions? Awesome, thank you. Thank you for the positive feedback. All right, so uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I guess y'all can have a little bit break until the uh, next session. Uh, thank you for uh, for joining and have a great rest of your Apache call. Bye-bye.